He was a young state senator, then assistant secretary of the Navy. Next, we see him swimming with small infantile paralysis patients. He himself stricken by that malady. He headed a nationwide fight against infantile paralysis, and the Warm Springs Foundation in Georgia was his favorite place of recreation. In spite of the physical handicap, he continued to progress in public affairs. He became governor of New York, and then was nominated for the presidency on the Democratic ticket. He was elected and inaugurated. I, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. The banks closed, President Roosevelt taking financial measures against the Depression. Social Security founded as he instituted a series of New Deal reforms. A vast program of public works to relieve unemployment. The president here starting the operation of the Norris Dam. His first two administrations concentrated on the battle against the Depression. We have survived all of the arduous burdens and the threatened dangers of a great economic calamity. Fear is vanishing, and confidence is growing on every side. With his grandchildren, he was infinitely human, a lover of laughter and of the out of doors. His fishing trips were famous. But the dark peril of war was looming with Jap and Nazi aggression. Franklin D. Roosevelt foresaw the peril to freedom, democracy, and universal peace. I have seen war. I have seen war on land and sea. I have seen blood running from the wounded. I have seen men coughing out their gassed lungs. I have seen the dead in the mud. I have seen cities destroyed. I have seen 200 limping, exhausted men come out of line, the survivors of a regiment of 1,000 that went forward 48 hours before. I have seen children starving. I have seen the agony of mothers and wives. with his mother in the days when there was hope that another world war might be averted. The visit of the British sovereigns to the United States increased British-American friendship. The warships of the fleet reviewed by the president American sea power becoming the more important with the outbreak of the European war. And in Canada, with the dominion at war, the president declared a fundamental American policy. I give to you assurance that the people of the United States will not stand idly by if domination of Canadian soil is threatened by any other empire. The Lend-Lease Bill signed, aid for Britain in the war against Nazi Germany, armament for all who fought against aggressors, and American opposition to Hitlerism was formulated at the first meeting of President Roosevelt and Prime Minister Winston Churchill on a warship in the Atlantic. America sought to restrain Jap aggression, and President Roosevelt, whom we see attending church there, conducted patient negotiations. Then Pearl Harbor, and in Congress, the American declaration of war against Japan. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States Casablanca, 
And at another Roosevelt Churchill conference, the president reviewed American troops in the North. American part in the overthrow of Nazi Germany has begun. Tehran conference, the participation of Stalin making it the big three. Then the president and General MacArthur in a Pacific War conference attended by Admiral Nimitz. As the nation's war leader, President Roosevelt won a fourth term and took the oath of office. His new administration began with victory in sight, and he emphasized post-war world organization to preserve peace. The Yalta Conference in the Crimea was the climax of the great international meetings in which Franklin D. Roosevelt played an historic part. Here, final plans for victory and world organization for peace were made by the big three, Churchill, Roosevelt, Stalin, the diplomatic pinnacle in the career of America's war president. King Farouk of Egypt, as the president returning from the Crimean Conference conferred with Oriental potentates, even Saud, Lord of the Desert. His last public appearance, reporting to Congress. I come from the Crimea Conference with a firm belief that we have made a good start on the road to a world of peace. And I am confident that the Congress and the American people will accept the results of this conference as the beginnings of a permanent structure of peace upon which we can begin to build on in which our children and grandchildren, yours and mine, the children and grandchildren of the whole world must live and can live. American delegation to the San Francisco Conference of the United Nations. The news was heralding victory, and on that day the victory president died at his favorite Warm Springs. Vice President Harry S. Truman becomes president. He takes office in a crisis of history when world war must be followed by an organization for world peace. President Truman announces that he will follow Franklin D. Roosevelt's policies and help bring to realization the Franklin Delano Roosevelt dream of world peace.